The views and opinions expressed by guests on the TWBC podcast are solely those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the views of nor constitute an endorsement by the host, TWBC, or the advertisers. National Championships, Confederation Championships, World Championships, major professional events. For over three decades, he has been there for many of the sport's greatest moments. And now he brings you even closer to the movers and shakers in the world of high echelon tournament water skiing. From the founder and creator of the Water Ski Broadcasting Company comes the TWBC Podcast. And now here's your host, Tony Lightfoot. Well, greetings one and all, and welcome to a very, very special episode of the TWBC uh, podcast. Uh, I am the aforementioned Tony Lightfoot, and I am over in Lake 38, uh, deep in the heart of Gadsden County in Florida, not too far outside of Quincy. And the reason why I'm here is uh, because, well, there's the, there's the Lake 38 uh, Pro Slalom competition going on uh, around about the time that I'm doing this podcast, and I'm fortunate enough to actually have the, the owner and proprietor of this facility, Mr. Kiefer Alberton, uh, to tell us a little bit more about this, uh, this facility. So, Keith, how are you doing this morning, sir? Doing great, doing great. All right, that's excellent. I mean, uh, it, it, mu it must absolutely tickle you to bits when you, when you see the likes of Will Asher and Freddie Winter and Manon Costa and, and, and all of these skiers come to your site, which will be celebrating its 10th anniversary next year. That's correct. Uh, it, uh, it is. It's, it's actually chilling to have that level of skiers here. And uh, this is our third year uh, having the pros, but uh, it's been great. Really, really been great, you know. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the genesis of the site because, I mean, I'm looking around at all of these trees and all these fields, the, you know, the rolling hills a little bit, a little bit here. And I spoke to you a little bit earlier about how it came about. And, I mean, when, when people think, okay, I'm going to find a nice plot of land here and build me a ski lake. But then the difficult part starts, doesn't it? After, that, that's, after correct. That. <laughs> that's correct. That's uh, correct. We basically had a field here, and uh, I, I, I found out it had enough length, but I didn't know if we could do it. So uh, I had the guy with Northwest Florida Water Management District meet me, and uh, he said, let me get this straight. Now, you're talking about doing it up here in this field. And I said, yeah. He says, not down in that bottom? I said, no. He said, well, you can't get a permit down there. That's a wetland. So I said, he said, if you do it up here, there's no permit required. So... Uh, that started it, and uh, it went from there, you know. Okay, yeah, because, I mean, basically, uh, for, the, for those of you who haven't really gotten a sense of uh, what the site looks like, obviously you can go to the webcast for the Lake 38 Pro Slalom, and, and obviously and there are there are extensive amount of pictures available online you can see. So, but basically, this, this lake, this artificial lake, just enough to fit inside the permit-free zone, you basically dug it into a hill, isn't that right? That's correct. Uh, basically, the hill they dug there, and they took that dirt and placed and made a, a dam down, I guess, the northwest side. And the full length of the lake, 2,000 feet, wrapped it around and kind of went back to the natural uh, earth where the boat ramp is. So it was 2,000 foot of dam, basically, and they dug that dirt and make that happen, you know. Yeah, because I noticed right there on the very on the very bottom where you had to build it up. I mean, you had con you had you basically had concrete reinforcement, and that and I, I've seen that one or two times, but uh, but n no, nothing nothing this grandiose, and certainly certainly nothing like that recently. So I mean, I mean, tell us how much concrete you had to use to support the burn. Well, it, it is not like you think. Uh, that concrete you're seeing there is actually to uh, stop erosion when the boat goes around the island. Uh huh. And it's only like two inches thick, so it's just enough to stop it. But what's really strange about it, when you drive in, the lake is over your head. <laughs> when you come around yeah. in the lake, the, the lake is like 30 feet above your head, you know. So it's kind of feels funny, but uh, you don't notice it when you're skiing, you know. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I mean, the reactions that I get from a lot of the skiers, a lot of the competitors, is that they're 
that they're actually skiing less inside of a bowl and they're actually skiing more upon like land surface level and that's a that's a little bit of a weird feeling to get used to for a lot of these competitors yeah. once they do you know it's uh, they're off to the races yeah oh yeah that's true like the first time it's like this doesn't feel right you know <laughs> it doesn't feel like a normal lake but uh you know pass down pass back and you're good you you're you, you feel good and it's a narrow lake and that's there's a reason for that uh, the wind doesn't bother it as bad big open lake doesn't take much you got rollers <clears throat> excuse me uh, and uh, so it's a, it's a narrow lake and we've had winds 25 knots and you're you can still ski so okay yeah well obviously before all of this happened with the lake construction you I mean you were you were, you were involved, heavily involved, still heavily involved in the sport. I mean, I don't know how much heavy you can get, really. But, I mean, <laughs> you, you, but, I mean you've been skiing, you've been competing a while. So tell us a little bit about your story so far as how you got into the sport and eventually to the point where you come up with this crazy idea of building your own <laughs> lake right in the, deep in the heart of Gadsden County. Well, it's, it's, uh, I'll make a, a long story short. <clears throat> I was, uh, I'm 67 now. And when I was 22 years old, we had a family reunion in South Florida in Manatee Springs, and my cousins were there, and uh, they had a boat there. And you want to ski? I said, I don't know how. And they said, well, come on, we'll show you. So we had a pair of Budweiser skis, and I was all over the place. And, of course, they were drinking, and we were drinking, and they were laughing at me, rolling on the bottom of the boat, laughing and pointing at me, and it made me mad. It made me mad. I said, I'm going to get better at this. And that started it when I was 22. So time went on, and we got our boat, and we just free skied on the lake. And next thing you know, uh, there was a little tournament up at Lake Seminole about 30 minutes from here, mm -hmm. south, southwest Georgia. And we was first ones there. We wanted to watch this competition. The, guy, the gate says, y'all want to ski in it? And I don't know. Uh, we're not that good. He said, no, nobody else is either. So we went. <laughs> a guy named Gary Bates and his dad was putting it on. And uh, – so we got out there, and I think I barefooted. I came in second barefooting, and I think I came in last in slalom. Yeah, this was a, this was a time where they actually combined barefooting and tournament into, into yeah, the same Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. And uh, anyway, that started it, and I got the bug bad. I mean, I so I just started skiing. I met a guy. I finally got a ski nautique. It was a used 83 nautique I bought around the Orlando area. Paid $10,000 for it. I, I can I can envisage one of these boats. They're, I mean, they're mm -hmm. significantly smaller than they are now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so we're on Lake Jackson in Tallahassee, right by US 27. And of course, we were showing off, you know, skiing. And there was a guy standing up there with his hand thumb up in the air, like you, hey, you give me a pull, I'll give you some gas. His name was Bill Walker. Oh. We called him Wild Bill Walker. He had a dog named Hickok. <laughs> 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 so, so I, I never did get that gas, but that guy kind of got me straight as far as, you know, how to ski the slalom course. And that's that's when we really started getting heavy. And so since then, I bought, I, I don't know, probably 10, 10 boats at least, you know. Uh, and uh, and once we got this, we started doing tournaments, you know. And that that's a fast story, but... That's yeah, kinda, it, that's kind of how it went down. You I know? think I think I think a lot of people can draw a lot of parallels to your story. I mean, I, I mean, how I got into the sport. I mean, I was I was relatively young when I got into the sport. I mean, and it, and it was like in the early eighties. Uh, mine a little bit different. I actually started in Abu Dhabi, you know. So obviously there wasn't too much drink or alcohol or any, <laughs> or or, 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 uh, or uh, libations involved in 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 that, you know. So I mean, like fast forward to right now. I mean, you're a uh, Next year, you'll be celebrating the 10th anniversary, and I mentioned right off the bat, I mean, this, this site brings in, uh, at a tournament, obviously, you've got uh, Freddie Winter and a whole bunch of others, JT and, and who, whoever mm -hmm. else comes in for the, for the pro. But, I mean, I mean, even out of competition during the season, I mean, you've, got, you've had pros like Matteo Lizzeri, mm -hmm. you've got Dane Meckler and, and Sean Hunter, mm -hmm. you know, so... so to be able to have those guys here, and and additionally to be able to drive them as well, I mean mm -hmm. that, that, mu that must that must really really uh, oh yes oh light, yes lighten your heart a little bit. Yeah, it know? does, and you know um, you know Dane, Sean, 
Kelly Breeden, Mateo, and now starting in the fall, Landon Gills. Oh yeah, because he's because he's going he's uh, he's graduated from Florida Southern, and now he's going to try and take his law degree over at, at Florida, Florida State. State. Yes. Right. So he'll be st- he'll be skiing here. So <clears throat> that's kind of how it happened. I mean, and then of course Mateo was the big driver of of the pros. I mean, he knew most of them. I didn't. I knew a few of them. You know, I knew Sean and people like that, but I didn't know Will. And I knew JT. But I mean, all those guys, <clears throat> Freddie Winter. I mean, he knew them well, and he introduced them and we just had a regular record tournament and he had them all here and they they came and they liked it so then I said well again Mateo was the one that helped me set up the pro event and all uh he and Dane were a big help in that and so um I want to thank them for that and anyway other than that it's been it's been great it's just uh growing we also uh I think September 17th 18th and 19th we're gonna have uh the 55K West uh, Championship here, mm-hmm. which is the old ba- big dog, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, you know. And uh, so it's supposed to be webcast, so maybe we can get you guys to do that. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yes, indeed. J- j- just uh, just give us a little bit of light persuasion, and we could well be there for that. But uh, but I tell you what, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking around, and I mean, it's – not not only if you build built up the lake, I mean, mm. I mean, you, you you could quite easily just build a lake and build a dock and everything and every and and a lot of people would be fine with that. But I mean, we're we're here in the seventh buoy, mm-hmm. which is like the little rec facility where you've got your big screen TV, your pool table, darts, darts. So obviously, hospitality, right, and doing right by mm-hmm. by the skiers and the visitors here is definitely right. important to you, right? Well. We try to do something a little different. Uh, uh, we we feed everybody. I mean, there'll even be guests coming here eating. You you've seen it, so yeah, I have. And uh, uh, the skier falls. We try to have somebody on the golf cart go pick them up and give them a ride back. Just little things like that, you know, stuff you don't normally see, you know. So, um, but we want everybody. The seventh buoy is for the skiers, and it gives them a place to get out of the heat. They can. It gives them something to do between their rounds. The kids down here playing basketball, ping pong, darts, pool, and it just it changes the uh, the boredom, if you will. Like there's been a lot of tournaments you go to in Florida. It's burning up hot. You got to sit in your car. You don't have nothing to do. You're sitting there twiddling your thumbs until yeah, you're set. I, I, you know? I've, been, I've been to tournaments like that outside Florida a lot of times. You know, so so I, I get where you're going. Yeah, yeah, it's, it uh, it makes a difference, I think. Anyway, um, yesterday, right here, the webcast on this TV, this was the hot spot. Everybody was sitting here wa- watching it. It felt, it felt really funny because I'm watching this on TV, and all of a sudden I hear a boat go by, and I look, oh, what's that? Oh, it's happening here. It, you know, it just did, <laughs> didn't even seem like it was happening here, you know. But uh, that was unique. I, I really enjoyed that. So. Uh, it should be a good finals today. Obviously, you provided a lot of uh, a, a lot of great things to the skiers, the lake, the, the seventh buoy, and everything like that. You know, but obviously, obviously, a guy with with your with your imagination and with your push and drive has has maybe some ideas as to how the sport should continue on, how it should grow, mm-hmm. how it should develop, mm-hmm. you know, and um, you yep. probably have them in the back of your mind. I do. So I do. <laughs> here's a good opportunity to, uh, <laughs> to, to let, to let the folks know what you, what you think and how, how the sport should develop here. So, well, I mean, um, one of the biggest things is what you guys do, you know, you're actually bringing fun back into tournament skiing. People can sit at their home and say, Minnesota or somewhere where it's snowing outside and get to watch this, you know, and uh, and it opens it up to people that don't know anything about it. We had people here yesterday that didn't even know what slalom skiing was, and after the tournament was over, we put them in the boat. And Janina was here, uh-huh. Janina Bonneman, um, Dane Meckler's fiance, yeah, and uh, she put on a trick ski and they rode in the boat and watched her do flips forward and back and toe toe run and everything, and so. We're introducing people to the sport, you know, and here I don't charge anybody to ski. 
and they bring some gas or some beer, <laughs> mainly beer, but no, beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, has to stop but that's true. I mean, I've, I've said it before. I told Mateo, look, I, I'm retired now, but I can't play by myself. And so we, we bring people in here and, uh, and teach them how to ski, you know, um, uh, and introduce new people. Like there's a lot of kids here like, today. They're skiing right now as we speak. And, uh, we, we've got to expose more people. We can't be people that are snooty. Oh, this is my lake. <clears throat> I don't want anybody here on this. Uh, they're not that good. Uh, no, we, we've got to open the doors and let people come in and start skiing, you know, teach them how to get, get them interested in it. Um, you know, got some old skis, give them a ski, you know, I've done it. I've got them. I've got skis over there that I, as soon as I get somebody that fits, I'm going to give it to them, you mm -hmm. know, and that's how it starts. And you don't ever know. They might end up being a world champion one day, you know, so you just, just never know, never know, never know. All right, then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up a little okay. bit here, but, uh, anything else you'd like to say in closing to the good fans out there? Uh, just keep watching TWBC, <laughs> you know, keep watching some water skiing and get involved, you know, you oh. know. All right, then. Thank you very much indeed uh, for that little plug uh, towards the end. <laughs> and you've been listening to Keith Olberton. I'm Tony Lightfoot. And uh, uh, join us again for the next episode of the TWBC podcast. But until then, ciao for now. Thank you for listening to the TWBC podcast. Be sure to check out our website at waterskibroadcasting.com. Links to our presence on major social media platforms can be found there, as well as updates to our webcast and this podcast. Duplication or rebroadcasting of this broadcast without written consent of TWBC is prohibited. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to join us next time for the next edition of the TWBC Podcasts.